let's be real. If you've been watching golf at all in the past couple months, you know about the Live Golf Circuit. You know about this team right here, the Four Aces GC. Talking about Dustin Johnson, Taylor, uh, Taylor Gooch, Patrick Reed, and, of course, Pat Perez. We all know about them. They're an interesting bunch. They're a bunch that hasn't been undefeated so far on American soil in the Live Golf format. They've won a fudge ton load of money. Dustin Johnson, of course, winning $36 million this season. Pat Perez, of course, the low man on the totem pole, winning over $8 million this year. Which, by the way, is his single biggest year of his career by far. By, by far. He's won a few times in the PGA Tour, but he's gotten a lot of flack this season over being the weak man on the team or being the guy who's just there on the team. But real talk, who would you rather have than Pat Perez as your fourth man? That's really my question to you. Like when you look at, at the teams out there and you, when you only think about like what's available on the, on the live circuit right now as far as available players are, the four aces are a stacked team from one, from one to four. All right, Pat Perez is actually a really, really good player. And in all honesty, on several teams, on several teams out there, I would, I would easily say that he's probably would be a, uh, the number two player on several teams. Several teams. Now, granted, hopefully by season, by next season, the teams are a little bit more balanced. And by balanced, I don't mean that, that the teams are reshuffling. There was a dumbass article out there, by the way, from, from some idiot from ESPN who's saying that Taylor Gooch got traded to the Niblicks and Peter Uline joined joined four aces. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? Did you, did you even watch any of Live Golf? Clearly you didn't. Otherwise, you would know that, P, that Peter Uline and, and, and Brooks Kepka are closer than Chase Kepka is his own brother. So that's not happening. He's not going to, to that team. The point is, though, that the four aces are freaking stacked. They really are. And then they have been uh, the whole entire time for Live Golf. They've been stud nuggets for Live Golf. So we're going to talk right now about the fourth man on the team. The fourth man. These are the teams right here. We all know about them. The four aces, Smash, the Niblicks, Majestics, High Flyers, Ironheads, Cliques, Fireballs, Punch, Crushers, Torque, Stinger. Obviously, a couple of these teams we expect to be able to have a changed logo, a changed name and all that by next season. But real talk for right now, we're going with what we saw, especially going into the Miami situation. And we're not going to talk about individually Miami because by, by the time they reach Miami, most of these teams are pretty banged up. But real talk, we're going to be looking at which team's guy is the fourth man. And the fourth man is really the person who you expect the least out of in each, of, in each event. The person who is, if there is a coattail rider, is the coattail rider. A.K.A. who is the Pat Perez on each team. Uh, not that Pat Perez is not helpful, but the, just the fact that you, so many of you guys bash on Pat Perez and, and hate on Pat Perez... But real talk, Pat Perez is freaking clutch in comparison to a lot of other situations. So, that being the case, let's get down to business, all right? Let's get down to business. I'm trying to adjust this real quickly because I'm lazy. Oh, yeah, I haven't, this, I haven't done this in a while, so forgive me. Wow, I'm horrible at this. The point is, is that we have this list right here to be able to help us really look, look at and get down to What's going on with the fourth man? Who is the fourth man on each one of these teams? So, we have for Fireballs GC, we have Carlos Ortiz. And I know, a lot of you guys are thinking, well, Carlos Ortiz, how is he the fourth man on that team? And yeah, yeah well, the, hold up now. The Fireballs are a stacked team. They really are. Uh, they're one of the few teams out there that I think won't have very many roster changes, if any at all. If you look at their team uh, through the uh, through the end the end of the season, you know they pretty much kept the same roster ever since the changes at the at the midway point. They they have Sergio Garcia, Abraham Answer, Carlos Ortiz, and Eugenio Cachara. Now Chikara would be the low man on the totem pole, except for that he won the event in Bangkok. So that's really why he isn't the low man on the totem pole. Abraham Answer is still number twenty in the top twenty five in the world, uh, and far as far as world ranking points. Um, now, obviously, the world ranking points are flawed right now because they don't include live golf players, but Abraham Mantis freaking clutch. And Sergio Garcia, Sergio is, is somebody who literally, is, A, he's the captain, but B, he's one of the best captains out there as far as being able to keep his cool, be under pressure. Uh, he, you know, he beat, uh, you know, yeah, he beat Cam Smith uh, in, the, in the singles play. He, uh, he, he threatened for the crown in, in Jeddah. He threatened in several other events. 
you can't mark him as the worst player. Carlos Ortiz really only had one or two good finishes uh, overall, and they were both before the the full live lives. You know, the, the the full teams were developed before you had a lot of the good a lot of the big name players there. For the Crushers, it's Charles Howell the third. Charles Howell the third, great player, consistent player, longtime veteran, worst guy on their team. Uh, how can you say that? He's a great player. He is a great player. But look at what else what else they have. They have, you know, Bryson DeChambeau, who in all honesty, I guess you could call him possibly the worst player, but you know, you really can't. Uh, you, you, they have Anabon Lahiri who, who who lost in a playoff in Boston. Uh, and then of course they have Paul Casey, who Paul Casey, by the way, if you watch the live the live events, it's so hilarious to watch because the past like three um, in the uh, single play uh, uh, championships, Jeddah, Bangkok, uh, uh, and the one before that, uh, Chicago. He he just he just sneaks up the leaderboard when, when no one is looking, and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, Paul Casey's Paul Casey's tied for third. Paul Casey's at 16 under. That's what Paul Casey does. He just sneaks up there, and you're like, what the what the, what the chicken salad? So Charles Howell is the worst guy on the team. Uh, for the for the smash, it is Chase Kepka. Easily. Sorry, you're not beating up Kokrak on this one. Kokrak's a way better player than you. Henny Duplessis for Slinger GC. Then, of course, we have uh, uh, for the Cliques. The Cliques are another tough one because the Cliques, you have Laurie Cantor, who's kind of spotty here or there. You have Graham McDowell, who's kind of spotty here or there. And you have uh, uh, you have uh, Martin Keimer, who is the captain, who's spotty here or there and has injury problems. And then you have Richard Bland, who's 50. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, Graham, ha- ha- I would say, is the weakest of those players. However, they're all pretty equally in this, uh, pretty close. So the Cliques are one of the most, I would say, well-rounded teams. Uh, not in that they're all going to be, you know, people that can win a tournament every week, but they're all relatively, I would say, the sc- at the same skill level, at the same, uh, you know, level of competitiveness as a team. They're, they're very close to what the four aces are, but just not all winners, if that makes sense. For Punch GC, it's Wade Ormsby. Uh, very obvious. You're not, he hasn't beaten Matt Jones, uh, Mark Leishman, or Cam Smith. You know, he never finished top in his team. He was the captain originally for Punch, but mm, no. Wade Ormsby is the weakest guy on Punch. I'm sure he'd agree. Uh, for, for the four aces, you have Pat Perez. For the high flyers, you have Mickelson. Uh, yeah, Mickelson is... The most inconsistent of those of those teams uh, of their team. Honestly, thought about putting Matt Wolf here instead because Matt Wolf has mental problems. Um, and when I say that, like I don't mean that he's like you know, you know, special. I mean that he's he gets in his own head. He, he can he's he's one of those players who can threaten and can win and can finish really high. But he also gets up his own ass and then you know goes and. And, and you know he he is very much like Pat Perez in you know when Pat Perez something all of a sudden you know throws him off on the course he's he's gone for the whole rest of the round and the whole rest of the week you know he'll he'll break putters he'll throw things but Phil even though Phil is trending upward Phil is technically still the most inconsistent on his team um, however love Phil think he's think he's a lot better a uh, fourth man than most people people think for the Niblicks. The crappiest team that there was last season, Hudson Swaff, uh, 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 Hudson Swafford, Turk Pettit, and, and uh, sorry, James Pyatt, uh, Turk Pettit, and Hudson Swafford are all three equally bad. Um, so that's why I put them all here. They're all three here because they're all three equally bad. Um, I'd be surprised if any of them are still on uh, a team as anything other than the fifth man because next season they are adding a fifth man probably as a nice way to like shove the guys who really aren't performing off onto the side but yeah Swafford, Pyatt, Pettit all equally bad all equally not good uh, uh, and then of course uh, for the Majestics you have Sam Horsfield difficult to mark the Majestics because the Majestics do have uh, you know three old uh, three legendary old guys and then Sam Horsfield. Uh, but Sam Horsfield, you know, uh, you would put Stenson on this list because Stenson has had some bad weeks and vertigo problems. But Stenson also won in Boston, in, in, in New Jersey, I think it was. It was either New Jersey or Boston. I think it, no, uh, it was New Jersey. 
because uh, Boston was won by DJ. But yeah, so but yeah, Sam Horsfield is the weakest player on that team. Another one of those teams that's pretty strong overall. Uh, C1 Kim, we all know why C1 Kim is on there. I mean, don't get me wrong, he did really well in Bangkok and in Jeddah, but on American soil, he has been absolute dumpster fodder. And then for Torque, it's Scott Vincent. It's kind of hard to pick because Scott uh, because Torque had had the most wacky roster this whole entire season. It was originally uh, set up to be the Japanese team, uh, and then there was some problems with the Japanese players where, where ultimately I think what happened was they, they, they didn't sign Hideki Matsuyama, and so they kind of threw all the Japanese players away and because they didn't really have a face for the Japanese team. They, they just had three Japanese guys that were showing up the tournaments and that were, you know, great players, mind you. Uh, but they just they, they didn't get the face that they wanted, so they they kind of threw away the idea of a Japanese team, and then and then gave Neiman Neiman his squad um, for Torque, and have really not got given it yet an identity. But they're close. They're close. I think maybe who knows? We'll find out. If they get Mito Pereira to start next season, they will have what they want, which is the South American team. Uh, but anyway, so we have our categories right here. Could win the event. Might challenge for the event for an event. One round expected. That's for the team side of the event. Like, ah, they're, they're not going to challenge for, for a trophy. Uh, but they might, you know, they, they, we expect them to post one good round per tournament. Eh is basically, well, it's eh. When we're like, eh, like, I mean, eh. And then, you know, can, can, you, can you just break 75? That's where it's like, dude, I, like I, I have zero. I, I expect zero out of you, other than just please, for the love of God, break seventy-five in a turn in a round. So, where do these guys sit? Let's start off with some really easy ones right here. Mickelson, Mickelson, still, despite everything that's going on, he's still right in here in the one round expected or might challenge. He's honestly in between the two of them, because if you notice, he did finish pretty about like top ten. In, uh, in in Bangkok, he was getting it up uh, toward the end. He, he was trending in the right direction. He played very well in his last round uh, versus uh, uh, versus Cam Smith in the in the in the uh, championship. He's trending in the right direction, but he's also going to be going to be one year older next season. So honestly, one round expected is what I'm putting him at. Uh, but you know, if he gets his form back and, and keeps his form, definitely going to see him at the Mike Challenge. Once they introduced uh, shorts to the league, him and Sergio both went from playing mediocre to playing well. Sergio played better, but they both started playing well once they, once they were allowed to play a play in shorts. So, for, for Hudson Swafford, Turk Pettit, and James Pyatt, eh, for Pyatt, can you just break 75 for Pettit, for, for Pettit and Swafford? That's literally where these guys have been at all season long. Pyatt did really well in Jeddah for like a round or two, got himself onto the leaderboard. We thought that he was heading in the right direction. That's why he's higher than these two. These two, they'd birdie four holes, then they'd, then they'd, then they'd quad bogey like three in a row or whatever. You know, I'm being hyperbolic, but it was, it was bad to watch. They had plenty of, of flub flubs where you're just like, bruh, like, like bruh. Like, bruh. Like, like, like bruh. Um, Tori GC, Scott Vincent, he's also an eh, where it's like, eh, like, eh, eh. My, that's, 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 that's the best way I can phrase it. Like, eh. There's nothing else you can say about that. It's just, eh, eh. Like, you're not excited to have him on your team. You, you're like, eh, eh, whatever. He's, just, he's, he's here. He's, he's filler. Uh, Henny Duplessis. It's, it's really odd because Henny Duplessis finished second in London, but he's still an eh. Because even though he finished second in London, he was playing really, really, really bad. He had several uh, tournaments where he finished either last or right next to last immediately after London, uh, where you know all of a sudden the competition got better uh, and the courses where they're playing were harder, and he just uh, eh, eh. Honestly, it's one of those where I'm, I'm still not sure who is actually a better player for the team, whether it's Sean Norris or Henny. Uh, but I, I would say Henny is still, eh. C1. C1, it's literally, can you just break 75? Now, when they're playing international events, when they're playing international events, the dude is a might challenge. 
But if you looked at the schedule this last season, they played uh, five of their t- uh, total events on American soil. Five of the eight, eight, five of the eight events, or 62.5% of the season was played in American soil. And in those uh, events on American soil, C1 Kim was absolute dumpster diving. I mean, bruh, like, ugh, like, ugh, ugh. Like, if the homie can just break 75, we're okay with you, buddy. That's literally where he's at. Wade Ormsby for punch. Eh. 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 Like, he's never going to shoot uh, seven, 7 over, but he's never going to shoot 3 under. You know? So it's like, eh. Eh. Graham McDowell is one of those guys who I honestly put as a one-round expected guy. Because, again, he had several moments where all of a sudden you'd see him on the leaderboard. He'd start off early in a round, have, five or, have four or five boaties, birdies in, se- in several situations, and then just kind of just you know, fall apart, have, have, a, have a weird hole, kind of go, you know, just run out the back door. We go over to Chase Kepka. Chase Kepka's an eh, eh, mm. You go, but then you look at these four right here, these last four that we have. You have Sam Horsfield, Pat Perez, we have Charles Howell III, and Carlos Ortiz. Carlos Ortiz is literally the, the only one that I would say out of the bottom, t- the, the bottom, you know, the, the fourth man caliber players who could win an event. He challenged in the second event of the of the of the of Live Golf, which was in Portland, which you know Portland, if you remember, was the first event that had the fully formed roster of the four aces. You know where you have finally had Patrick Perez, Taylor Gooch, and 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 Patrick Reed and Dustin Johnson all on the same team, which was a stud nugget squad. So and he finished you know second in that one. He was really, really good overall. He had several opportunities where he could have just, if he had gotten a few more birdies, a few more here or there, he could have, he could have won. And I think that eventually he will win an event. He's that talented. Charles Howell III is someone who might challenge. And you may say, well, why, why is he up there? Charles Howell III is somebody who has been a career-long journeyman on the PGA Tour. He was somebody who... You know, made a name for himself when he was younger. Came out of Oklahoma State, uh, and then just never—he never played bad. He never really won much, but he, he never played bad, and he was always in the conversation. He is somebody who is probably one of the most consistent players on the, on in in, in all of live golf, in all of the in all of professional golf out there. He's somebody who you can trust to never shoot a really bad round. And so he's somebody who is sneaky. He's like a Paul Casey, who is his teammate, who will just sneak his way onto the leaderboard and no one will notice because he doesn't make any big splashes. You know, he doesn't throw out 75 F-bombs. He doesn't throw clubs. He doesn't, you know, uh, have hole-in-ones either, though. He's just steady. And that's why he's one of those guys who might challenge. Sam Horsfield. He's a one-round expected guy. He's one of those guys who, hey, thanks for what you did on Saturday. Mm, that's pretty much what you expect for him right now. Could trend upward. Probably going to stay about where he is. So where does that put our low and, and mighty Pat Perez? The guy that everyone craps on. The guy that everyone goes, oh, he's just riding coattails. Where did I put him at? One run expected. That's where he's at right now. Let's be honest right now. That's where he's at. He's somebody who, in all honesty, you can expect one round out of him. And expect, expect that one round to be useful. Um, he's had moments where he's been, he's had rounds where he's been five under during the round. I think he had like a four under that actually posted one day. He's had good rounds. He's had rounds that started off pretty strong. However, he does have parts uh, times in the tournament where he falls completely apart and is completely out of it for individual play. So real talk, there's only really out of the fourth man caliber players right now on, on, in live golf out of the, out of the possible fourth man guys there's really only two guys who are unilaterally better than him as the fourth man now you can argue for uh, for phil or graham mcdowell or, and sam horsefield being uh, a better pick than him or a more stable pick than, than pat perez simply because these three aren't going to have the mental blow-ups that pat perez can have but really they're all th- all four of them are just one round expected guys but what do you think let me know in the comments below out of the fourth cal- out of the fourth man players on live golf right now who do you think is 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 the worst who do you think is actually better than pat perez 
Did I get it right? Let me know in the comments below.